series and sequences so far, we've looked at just the whole idea in general of a set of numbers that have some kind of order to them, right? Um, that's what distinguishes these from sets. Uh, we've also looked at specific kinds of series and sequences. And the two kinds were, do you remember what they were? Geometric and arithmetic, right? And it's the difference is how, how do these sequences go from term to term? Like how do they get bigger or how do they get smaller? Is that a constant uh, difference or is it a constant ratio? Right? Okay, so now you've got all the pieces in the formulas. We're now going to have a look at how do series and sequences appear in real life? Okay, and the most uh, obvious one is in money. So um, let's revise before we actually get to the applications to money situations and finance. Um, I want us to think back to the different kinds of interest that you can get. There's two kinds of interest, right? Um, if you're trying to earn money, you put money into a bank account. The first kind of interest is called simple, simple right? Which I, I don't call it simple interest. I call it silly interest because there is not an institution in the world that actually pays interest in this way. Um, we just we just learn it first because it's mathematically simple. So how does how does simple interest work? If you wanted to work out the interest of a certain amount of money put into an account. What's the name, by the way? When you put money into an account, it gets a name. It's called, it's called a principal, right? So if you're trying to work out the interest on a principal that's got a certain rate, say R, for a certain amount of time, say like N years or something like that, what's, what does the formula look like? How do we get the interest? It's, um, if, you, if you remember, think back to year eight. It's, um, just multiply through, right? The principal times whatever your rate is, uh, assuming that's, you know, like say, if it was 8%, I guess that'd be 1.08, so that it gets, no wait, sorry, no, that's wrong. It's 0 0.08, because I'm just working out the interest. Um, times however long you're in there for. Is, is that okay? okay? So if, for instance, if I started with $1,000, and I had it in there for 8% um, interest, so that's 0 0.08, and we had it in there for like you know, 20 years, okay? Um, 20 times that will be, will be point, uh, that would be 1.6, so you'll get $1,600 interest, right? And then I guess you would add that onto the original $1,000, so $2,600 would be your amount. Yeah. Okay. Now, of course, like we said, that's not how interest really works in the real world. What, what's the name of the normal interest that we have? Compound interest, right? <coughs> The idea being, as you add interest on, you get interest on the interest as well. That's why it's compounded, right? What was the formula for compound interest? Uh, I did start with an I, it started with an A, a final amount. What do we what do we have after the equal sign? Again, you start with your principal, right? But then you multiply, instead of just multiplying through by the numbers, you've got to raise to a power, right? So it's one plus your rate to the power of however long you had it in there, right? So instead of this kind of thing here, you have, for instance, um, $1,000 times, now, one plus R is why 1.08, that's what I was getting confused with before. And it's just this part that we raise to the power of, well, 20, I guess, because I after the first year I multiply once, and then the second year I multiply again, and again, and again, and by the end of 20, that's what I'm now, uh, this is all fine so far if we've just got a situation where you stick the money in the account and then you, you walk away and you do nothing, right? By the way, what do we call those kinds of accounts where you stick money in and you don't touch it and you're not allowed to touch it, what are they called? Most people don't have these, admittedly. They attract a higher interest rate. They're called term, dis term deposits. Does that ring a bell? Term deposits. So you stick your money in and you don't touch it, and um, that's what's going to happen to it. It'll just increase at whatever the interest rate is. But in the real world, usually we don't have term deposits. Um, usually money's going in or coming out. We're actually making withdrawals and deposits all the time, right? So um, let's consider, and you can make a new subheading. So this is not um, simple interest in the revision on compound interest anymore. Uh, let's think about investment. Investment. Okay, now, um, before I get into it, I'm going to tell you right off the bat, the main example of investment we talk about is superannuation. So as I go through this example, 
I'm going to keep referring back to how superannuation works because, well, most of you don't have jobs. Um, and even if you do, a lot of people have jobs and never think about how this works. Um, so I'm going to try and draw parallels with this and, and how this functions. Okay? So let's consider um, a man. And he invests, let's call it, say, $750 every year. So I guess we could say per annum. And he's investing it into, well, it could be just a bank account, but this is the way superannuation funds work. Your employer, or the government rather, takes money out of your paycheck and you never get it. You never get to see it because it goes straight into what we call a superannuation fund. Okay? Um, takes out this amount and sticks it into an account that's earning interest for you and you can only get it out at retirement. Okay? Every year he puts that amount in, but every year it's also earning interest. Okay, So let's just go with this rate here, um, which is earning interest at... 8% per annum. Okay, now, you, you guys know by the way, this is not enough information to work out how much he's going to earn, because as well as knowing the interest rate, what else do you need to know? Uh, you need to know how frequently something compounds, right? Uh, and we've looked at exercises before where the more frequently you compound, the, uh, the more money you make, right? Just for the sake of simplicity, let's just call it annually. Compound Okay. So here's my question. I think I went with 20 years before, okay? Um, how much will we have after 20 years? Now, there's a few different ways to approach this question. Just for the sake of not confusing you, I'm just going to show you one today so you don't get um, your wires crossed. I will show you other ones in subsequent lessons. But the key to this first method of working out what's, what's going to happen to this is to imagine that there are 20 years, right? And so um, I want you to consider 20 lots of this $750, okay? And this, uh, this wasn't intuitive to me when I first um, learnt it, but if you have $750 here and $750 here, and they're both earning interest at the same amount, okay? there's no difference from this to having both of them in the same place earning 8%. I don't know if that gels with your head. You're like, huh, really? Wouldn't it make more sense if you get it all together and that earns more money? Um, it doesn't. I can crunch the numbers for you later. But for now, just uh, trust me. And I'm going I'm to treat all of these $750 lots, the, um, the investments, I'm going to treat all 20 of them separately. Okay? So let's just think about that for a second. Now, <clears throat> coming back to these um, different lots, let's consider the first amount, that first $750 that he sticks in there. Based on our compound interest formula, we should know, just thinking about this one and forgetting about all the other $750 investments, we should be able to work out how much that $750 is worth after 20 years, right? Because that's the situation we started with. It's like $750 and then I just put it there and I don't touch it. Okay? What's it worth after 20 years? A is equal to the principal times... There's our simple, sorry, there's our compound interest formula, right? So I'm just going to stick my numbers in, right? 750 times, this is our 1.08 to the power of 20, because it's in there for 20 years, because I put it in right at the start, and it's there all the way to the end. So there's how we get off that. Now, what about the second lot? Next year, he puts in another 750. And when you compare it to the first lot, because you put it in one year later, um, instead of getting 20 lots of interest added onto it, you only get 19, right? So, skipping the formula, because I can see the pattern that's happening, right? Uh, this is going to be 750 by your interest, just by 19. Okay, now, you start to establish a pattern here, right? It's not that complicated. Uh, the next one's going to be 18 and 17. What will the last one be? At the beginning of the 20th year, he sticks in his 750. At the end of the 20th year, what will it be worth? Uh, 
beginning of the year, end of the year. It's been in there a whole year. So I guess it's going to get not 20 or 19, but just one lot of the interest. Is that okay? So the last $750. Superannuation have to do with series and sequences. Can you see what it has to do with series and sequences? I want, uh, the question was, how, what's the total value, right? Well, therefore, I need to take all of these lots of $750, of which there are 20, okay, and add them all up, right? So I could write it like this total amount is equal to, okay. Um, I could write each one individually, but I can see there's a common factor here. Namely, the principle is the same every single time. So I can put the 750 out the front, okay? And then what am I going to have afterwards? Well, my first lot, my first investment, will be this many lots of 750. Okay? Then my next one will be this many lots. And then I can keep going. And my last one will be worth that. Okay, now, if you've got another color there, this will help you. Um, I don't. Uh, this part here is the, the bit we're interested in, right? Now, um, just keep in mind, by the way, this series is the same whether I look at it um, going 2019, 18, all the way down to 1, or if I look at it the other way around. The sum is still the same. Are you agree with that? Yeah? Um, the reason why I'm going to think about it starting from here is because we usually think about series getting bigger, right? And it'll be a bit easier for our numbers. So, in your other color. Okay, what I'd like you to say is this is a GP where, okay, what are the three pieces of a GP that define a GP, right? You've got your first term, the common ratio, and then how many terms there are actually in the whole series, right? Remember, I was thinking about starting over here. What's the first term? It's just 1.08. What's the common ratio? Also 1.1. How many terms are there in total? Um, don't forget this is a 1. So if I just go 1 to the 1, 5, 7, this is just counting numbers. So I'm going to make it 20. Okay. Now, just before I go any further, um, this step here, right? Do you have to do this? Especially when you start to get very familiar with this process. You want to skip out on this. I highly recommend you don't. The reason why is because these numbers are really easy. Okay. Sometimes, especially this n here, right? Sometimes the n will be one less. Sometimes it will be one more. And it's really confusing as to which one it is. Okay. If you don't explicitly state which one it is, you often get it wrong. And the trick with it is, uh, what net effect will it have later on if I got this number wrong? Say, say I actually said 19 instead of 20. Okay. Well, your numbers will all be just slightly off. Like by the end, you'll be like $10 off or something like that. All your working will check out. It'll look really good. When you're going back through your exam, you'll be doing your, um, you'll be checking for errors, and everything's fine, okay? Because, you know, you didn't have this step, so you just went straight to your, you know, your actual work, okay? So because it's such an easy error to miss, that's why I recommend doing this explicit step, okay? Okay, so, therefore, if that's what this whole series is equal to, Bring that equal sign down. Um, you guys know what the sum of a GP is, right? The sum of a GP is uh, first term times, hmm, which one should we go with here? Probably um, the R first, right? Because R is bigger than 1. Yeah. Over R minus 1. Okay? And now that I've laid out all my pieces, I can say exactly what that's equal to, right? Uh, you'll need your calculator out for this one. It's 750 by, okay, A is 1.08, and here we've got 1.08 to the power of 20 minus 1, all over 0, 0.08. Is that okay? Now from there, you know, where was, where was the GP part? It was just, it was just in here, right? Getting, setting the series up and then working out what it was equal to. This part is just calculator work. Okay? However, still be careful. There's lots of little ways that you can get into a strife here. So watch out for your brackets and all that kind of thing. And you get your answer out at the end. I think it's something like 37. What did I get?
Yeah, check out. Yeah, sure. Okay, so there you go. There's a pretty typical question. Um, what you got given was how much was put in every year, um, how much interest it was earning, and how long. Right? And then we generated what was the final amount. Okay? Now, by the way, all of these steps here, okay, I'm trying to emphasize, be explicit, put everything there. One of the additional reasons why, even though it takes a while to write this all out, is, can you imagine, just imagine, instead of 750 every year for 20 years, um, in like the middle here, he wins the lottery and gets like $3,000 extra every year, or something like that, right? Now, if you know that and you have all of this set up, you can add that in, you'll come in somewhere in the middle, okay? And your subsequent working will take that into account. But some of the methods that, uh, I hate to say it, but some of the tutoring places will get you from here um, to here faster, but only if it's all nice and neat and there aren't any weird things that happen in the middle, okay? Uh, well, you know, he like uh, has to buy a new car and so he can't do 750 anymore or whatever. It changes in some way, okay? So do the pattern completely so that you get, if there's any adjustments, you can see how it affects your work later on. Okay, now, I'm going to follow up with a question to get you guys to think about this. I told you, uh, in the question, we got given principal, um, rate, and how long, right? And you had to work out the final amount. Well, what if I change it a little bit? What if our, um, our fictional man wants to end up with, not 37 grand, but say 50 grand? So instead of asking you to find A, I'm giving you A. Assuming the same principle and the same interest rate. How long will that take? So I want you to have a think about all that I've shown you for how I set up the question. You're trying to find a different variable. So obviously it's not going to go exactly the same. Okay? But I think you have enough sort of algebraic chops to try and handle out, well, how am I going to find A? That's my question. Okay?